Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well and welcome to Vlogmas Day something or other. I really should work that out before I start my intros. I wanted to do my November wrap up today, but I kind of wanted to do it a little bit differently because in November I read 30 books. I read a book a day as part of a kind of mini fun experiment because you know I know how to party and I did a whole vlog where you see me like read a book a day which I will link below um, and so I thought if I just do like a typical wrap up I'm going to be repeating myself a lot because you've heard my kind of like mini reviews there but then I didn't want to not do a wrap up because a that video is an hour long some people might not want to watch that but also they were my like immediate reactions and I think sometimes with a wrap up what I like especially for books that I've vlogged or just that I've read at the start of the month and I'm wrapping them up at the end you change how you feel your thoughts kind of come together more clearly so I thought what I would do as a wrap up is a cheeky little tier ranking video so I'm going to tier rank all of the 30 books that I read in November and hopefully that'll give you a good like more succinct idea of like how I felt about the books on a kind of one to five star vibe although that isn't how I'm going to tier rank it specifically and also if I have any like new thoughts since I read the books I can talk about them there so that is the plan that's what we're going to do I'm going to move now to my computer and we can start the tier ranking okay hopefully my little face is in the bottom this chair is really squeaky though so I apologize for that um and then I'm going to record my screen and yes yeah, so this is the little tier rank thing that I've made I've put my 30 books that I read in in there and then my tiers so at the top I've got chef kiss this is like five stars or like really close to five stars books that were my favorite in the month books that I'm gonna be raving about books that were just simply chef's kiss then I've got recommend to a friend books that I'll still be shouting about books that I really enjoyed and maybe I can even see more how like someone else would absolutely love it books that I think people should read they maybe just weren't like you know my absolute favorites but they were good books that I really enjoyed then we've got I mean sure um, which is something I say all the time and I mean sure like it was fine nothing to write home about then we've got oh no oh no is I do not like this book and then nine dank which is something else I say all the time and a nine dank is like a no well you know it means no thank you nine dank is like a no not for me whereas an oh no is a bit more like there might be more to discuss about an oh no a nine dank no so let's go first up we have trust by Domenico Starnone this is a translated um, piece of fiction about I'm gonna put it's about um like this couple who were together uh years ago and they like entrusted each other with their biggest darkest secret as a means to like keep them together but then they broke up and the guy is kind of like haunted throughout his whole entire life by like the secret that she knows about him and they have like a weird relationship I'm gonna put it in recommend to a friend because I did really enjoy it um it wasn't quite necessarily what I expected it wasn't as much about the secret and like quite as dark but there were some good hints of darkness in there there's some interesting character stuff towards the end especially i think the book is really interesting on just like the way we perceive ourselves and um, the way like we talk about our own life and i liked his writing style like some people might find it a little bit dry like there was a lot of stuff in there that was not really to do the story some people might find boring but I liked the kind of mundanity of his writing style and I would read from him again and yeah it's the sort of book I would recommend to a friend. Next up I have Convenience Store by Sayaka Murata. I loved this and I'm like does it go into chef's kiss? It's a really short book if you don't know it's about like a woman in Japan who works in a convenience store and she's like in her 30s and everyone thinks it's like really weird that she still works there and this book was like such a surprise. I thought I'd like it but I didn't think it was going to be anything special because I just I don't know it was short I'd heard a lot about it I was very wrong. I thought this book was hilarious, so insightful, so clever, really like charming and weird. And like I liked it a lot more than Trust. But was it Chef's Kiss? It kind of was Chef's Kiss, you know? I'm gonna put it in Chef's Kiss. Maybe I'll move it, but for now it's in Chef's Kiss. Next up we have I'm Not Your Baby Mother by Candice Braithwaite. This is an immediate Chef's Kiss. This is the best non-fiction book I read last month in November. It was an absolute five star. Um, highly, highly recommend you read this book it's about black motherhood specifically and it's like an amazing mix of really personal stuff about Candice's own journey through motherhood being like a mum blogger having children naming children sending children to school but then also interspersed with a lot of I'd say England specific um thoughts about what being black and a mother is like this idea of like the baby mother um and it's just so I love a memoir that manages or a piece of non-fiction that blends memoir and like polemic and this was perfect and so interesting and important and like kind of horrific you've got to read it 
Oh God, we're gonna have three chef's kisses in a row. I didn't mix these up very well. Well, actually they're just in a random order, but um, Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter, a chef kiss, five star. I love this book. This was the first five star book I'd read, well, fiction book I'd read since August. So I was very excited when I read it. This is a very strange little, very slight book uh, following a man and his two sons and this crow figure um, through their state of grief. So the son's mother and the husband's wife has died and it's written in kind of like small vignettes and it just explores grief in such a beautiful way. I was obsessed with it. Then I've got Blueberries by Elna Savage. I would recommend this to a friend. I hoped I liked this more and I kind of touched on in the vlog that like I think maybe I read it like because it's a collection of essays it's like essays on understanding so there's not a massive theme that pulls them together they're quite intellectual essays and I think maybe like I read it too much of it at once and it just lost some of its spark for me I don't know I really liked the first essay but then the more I read it the more I don't know it wasn't not impressing me as much but I wasn't feeling as like sparked by it and like switched on if that makes sense um and it's interesting because I think maybe some people might find the essays a little bit pretentious. I don't think that. I think they were interesting. She talks about a lot of things, like huge amounts of stuff, but mainly around, I'd say like art, feminism, ecology, that kind of thing. And they are things I find interesting and I enjoyed reading them. And I would read more from Eleanor Savage. After hearing other people's reviews, I think I was expecting to be like more completely blown away because people absolutely like adore it. Um, that people adore blueberries and I didn't feel like that but I would read from her and I would definitely recommend it to a friend because yeah I think I can like see where the really good bits are and I would happily recommend it to people and like I say I did enjoy it it was a 3.5 okay <sighs> then we've got Born of No Woman by Frank Bosi whose name I can't say Boosy this is a nine dank I hated this book I really really hated it um it's a piece of translated fiction that was actually sent to me by the publisher and i'm really sad because i was so excited about that book um and no it, uh, nine nine dank it's about um like a priest in france in the 1800s who for various reasons finds this like collection of diaries from this girl who died in an asylum uh in france in the 1800s and he reads it and it's about like this terrible, terrible life she's had. She was like sold to a rich family and then they treated her really, really poorly is what it's about. I might have to go get the book because I just didn't like this book for many, many reasons. I didn't like the writing style. It's translated um, and I think I mentioned in my vlog, I found the translation style odd. It read to me very American and I have since looked it up and I'm pretty sure the translator is American. At least she lives in America currently. And I think that took me out of it because it was meant to be like a French peasant from the 1800s and it had a very like modern American turn of phrase to it. She kept saying, our main character, seeing as how blah blah. And I, I think that is grammatically correct, but I don't like that anyway. Like when you could just say seeing as or even just as. So it'd be like, let me get the book. I can't find a good seeing as how example, but just believe me that she continuously said, I don't know, like, I was feeling hungry seeing as how I didn't have any breakfast and it was pissing me off but then so I didn't really like her character because she just felt really like unbelievable to me she was this 14 year old girl who'd been like sold to this family and is basically like abused and raped and it's horrible but she was just very like perfect little me and like I don't know I don't feel like we explored really like the inner pain of what that would have actually been like it was more seeming to try and like set her up as this like heroine who had this bad stuff happen to her but she was strong and she fought to escape and she fought for herself and it's like i just don't find that very interesting like that's the sort of thing i don't know that's like in pamela by samuel richardson or one of those older books where that was the the hero the heroine who bad things could have happened to but she's still trying to escape rather than like I don't know it didn't feel real to me that that's how a 14 year old who's alone and being like violently attacked would react also um she falls in love with this is spoilers by the way she falls in love with the gardener or whatever who's in this building and he's 30 and there's this weird bit where you're like what's going on here have they slept together but it's really weird where it's like 
and then she just couldn't even remember what had happened. She remembers like kind of falling into his arms, then the next thing you know, like she's just wandering around somewhere else and was like, what happened then? I'm like, well, what did happen then? Because if that 30 year old man just had sex with you, I'm gonna need to know that. And then yeah, that's the twist at the end. Like she has this child that you're meant to think is the guy who's attacked her, but no, it was whatever he's called, Ed Edmunds, because Edmund, the 30 year old man, did have sex with a 14 year old girl, so that's good. And then they run away to get the happily ever after. And it's not even like, I don't think you can't write that. Um, you know, like Lolita, whatever, that's fine. But but he's written, Edmund's written as this like tortured character who's like, oh, but I love her, but she's so beautiful. I'm like, bro, you're a nonce. You're a nonce. Um, and then they're like happily at the end. Also just, I find it believable that she might fall in love with this man who she sees as a savior. But then we get these annoying internal monologues from him about like, oh, life's so hard for me. And I'm like, okay, oh, I turned down honestly so many pages, but I would need to like read them through and remember the stupid thing that was on each page. Oh God, yeah. This is bloody Edmund um, talking about Rose. Even those who know nothing of beauty can't help but see her, as beauty is a thing that can't be held back. I only have the best of intentions, I think. I swear I tried, like all of this, and I'm like, and then he's like, she's a woman. Their mystery can't be explained, not by us men. All we can do is try and get near it. I'm like, no, she's not a woman though, is she? She's 14. And maybe like that was acceptable in the 1800s in France, which like, fine, I guess, if it's historically accurate, but he wasn't a sympathetic character. Like, and he kind of knew that he was a big fat nonce. Um, what else? It was just very dramatic, which like it should be dramatic, but it was dramatic in like I say, this almost like swashbuckling, romantic, like adventure way, um, which I just don't find very interesting because it doesn't feel very real to me. Like I say, it feels like this almost like fairy tale, but it was like a fairy tale that was like pretty effed up and I cared about no one. So I've been speaking for like five minutes about that book, did not like it. And the reviews were all amazing. I don't understand, I hated it. Anyway. Um, All Men Want to Know by Nina Buari, another translated piece of fiction. This is a chef kiss, absolutely chef kiss. I love this so much. It's a piece of auto fiction um, by the author who grew up in Algeria and then moved to Paris. And it's about her kind of exploring her sexuality, realizing she's a lesbian, thinking about her life in Algeria as a child, then in Paris and the kind of different like culture clash and does she feel French, does she feel Algerian, some amazing stuff about her mother, a lot of dark kind of male violence stuff in there but beautifully written in these vignettes, just perfectly evokes like the feeling of being a teenager with all of these big ideas around you know self discovery um, and the place you see as home falling into kind of violence and chaos, it was beautiful, I loved it. Burnt Coat by Sarah Hall, um, I'd recommend to a friend, this is bleak, it's like a covid novel basically but like a bit not exactly true to life for covid but it takes the pandemic and then it's basically about like a woman and a man spending lockdown together in her house and she's like a sculptor and so we find out about her childhood with her mother and then we see her now in the present thinking about that first lockdown with this man i loved the way it was written i think sarah hall writes so precisely so like chillingly um i loved all the like environmental stuff that she did, like the place um, and the main character being a sculptor. I found it extremely beautiful and tragic and very, very bleak, like very bleak, but I really, really liked it. I gave that like a, a four, I think. Um, the Grown Up by Galeen Flynn, I'd recommend to a friend. I thought it was fun and twisty. It's not a huge amount to say about it because it's like a 60 page thriller, but the vibes were good. The vibes had me creeped out. I liked the twists. I would love to have kind of seen it as a longer book, but maybe that's the point. But yeah, if you like Gillian Flynn, read it. And if you like, for some reason, 60 page thrillers, read it. And we've got Maglue by Tessa Moshfeg. Definitely recommend to a friend. Although I probably wouldn't recommend this out of all of a Tessa Moshfeg's novels to start with. This, I guess, is a novella. Definitely one of the less accessible ones of hers. It's about a drunken pirate. I always have to say drunken pirate together, even though it's true. In the 1800s, Hugh, at the start of the novel, has been kind of like, pirate arrested because of something that's happened to his friend and yeah so he's not really sure what's happened he's suffering from memory loss because he has this head injury and we kind of just get these weird surreal like fever dream-esque recollections of his 
from his relationship with this guy Johnson and like what they got up to, how he became a pirate, what he's kind of doing with his life and then him in prison. And it's super weird, but really, really atmospheric and it doesn't like give you all the answers, but I found that quite fun. It was just a bit of a like odd puzzle, but I love Mushfix's writing. Um, Home by Toni Morrison. I'd recommend to a friend. I enjoyed this. It's a really short novel um, and it's like one of the most recent ones that I read and um, so I feel like my thoughts aren't that different to the vlog but it had some really interesting stuff in there it's about a man who was fighting in the Korean War and he like comes home and then his sister's in trouble so he has to go and try and find his sister and there was some really really good stuff in it I think Toni Morrison writes that kind of like abject horror like horrifying things very well and I liked there was almost like a twist in this that I thought really really worked um but then some of the stuff that was very horrifying particularly around the sister she kind of skirted away from and I think because maybe if it was longer we could have got more about that but I thought the relationships worked well maybe felt a little bit rushed at the end so it was like a 3.5 but I would still recommend it to a friend then Sea State by Tabitha Lasley I feel like we're gonna have so many recommends to a friend and like no I mean Shaw's Sea State by Tabitha Lasley this is a um kind of memoir about a woman who goes and lives in Aberdeen to like interview men who work on oil rigs because she's interested in like what the culture of oil rigging is like and what are men like when women aren't around but then she ends up having a relationship an extramarital relationship with one of the guys because he's married and they have this like really really messy affair I really actually enjoyed this like it was a weird book I didn't find her a particularly sympathetic narrator but I like that I think that gives a memoir like a more interesting aspect I don't know I found it very fascinating because I just hadn't really read anything like that before but I would say it's a lot less about the oil rigs than it is about like her affair but I liked how that kind of came together all organically and she was kind of rude about people in the north of England but who isn't so yeah I recommend to a friend I enjoyed that Denise Miner's Rizzio definitely recommend to a friend I don't like historical fiction and I love this it's a super short novella um reimagining like this one night with Mary Queen of Scots where her husband arranges for her like advisor to be killed in front of her and she's like pregnant and it's so dramatic you know I often say I don't really like books that are really action based and I don't but I don't know because maybe it was shorter and it'd been set up pretty well so I was like invested in the characters I was like flicking through those pages when it was all kicking off really really enjoyed it um you'll fly through it but and sometimes I'll be like, oh, the book's so short, what's the point of even reading it? Which is stupid, but it's how I feel. But no, Rizzio is great. Highly recommend. <sighs> Sweet Bean Paste by Durian Sukegawa. I mean, sure. This is translated from the Japanese and it's like a sweet intergenerational friendship story about this man who runs a shop making, I've already forgotten what they're called, these little like sweet dumplings that are filled with sweet bean paste. And then this old woman comes and is like, can I have a job? And at first he's like, no, you old. But then he's like, okay, sure. They become friends. But then there's like some drama. This woman has some history. I found, I, it just wasn't written in a way I would I wanted it to have been, if that makes sense. Because the premise, it sounds like something like Housekeeper and the Professor, which I loved, that kind of intergenerational sweet, but a bit sad. And it was that, but I just found the writing style odd. I don't know, a little bit, felt like it was being written quite young and everything was like quite explained to you or like all of the like twists were quite obvious which I don't mind but then don't set them up as like big surprises yeah I just didn't really like the writing style I mean it was sweet I found the woman's backstory interesting but I guess I probably would have preferred to have read it I don't know I felt like everything was being handed to me like a little bit much and all of the characters were just like perfect sweet characters to try and make you cry but I have no problem with it it was I mean sure you know I mean sure Little Scratch by Rebecca Watson, recommend to a friend, really enjoyed that. Um, it's like a, quite an experimental novel set over the course of one day. We're just in this character's inner monologue as she's like going about her normal day, going to work, meeting her boyfriend. Sorry, I've got a dry mouth now. I'm going to have to have a bit of seven up. All of this in the aftermath of her sexual assault by her boss. Um, and I say it's written in experimental style because like you're really mapping like her exact thoughts onto the page so there's a lot of like repetition and line breaks and I think that Rebecca Watson has captured all of that so well it's like a very powerful novel and it's very affecting and it's kind of light touch because it's so short and so sparsely written at the same time as having like a huge impact and I think it was just really interesting the way that she explored this character's psyche in I mean a lot of it 
you know, it's similar to things I've read before that look at the aftermath of sexual assault, which shows the kind of, I don't know, the parts of the experience that are like universal, but then also I thought she approached some things differently. I just thought it was a really, really worthwhile novel and I thought stylistically it was great. I really felt like the character was real and I'll definitely be reading more from Rebecca Watson when she publishes it. My Phantoms by Gwendolyn Riley also would recommend to a friend. Really, really liked this one. This is such a like gonna be a cult classic book, I think. Everyone who I've seen who's read it loved it, but I haven't seen that many people read it, if that makes sense. This is about a mother-daughter relationship that is odd. Um, and we follow our main character who, yeah, kind of thinks about her relationship with her mother, her childhood, and then basically just like meets up with her mother once a year. Oh, I've scratched my neck. Um, meets up with her mother once a year and then we get their conversation and it, nothing happens apart from the conversations they have together. And I think the dialogue's written so smartly that I love those like really close interpersonal relationships. Like it's just taking a quirky, weird relationship and really delving into it and making you really think about those two characters and like their own very specific quirks that they have in their psyche. I just think it's so, so good. I haven't actually read any other Gwendolyn Riley. I do, I used to have a copy of First Love, I think. Anyway, I really, really like that. That might even be a, that would like be going into Chef's Kiss as would Little Scratch, um, but we don't wanna to put too many in Chef's Kiss. Next up, Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls. Again, recommend your friend, love this. Another kind of potentially underrated book. This is was published in the 80s and it's about like a woman who meets a sea creature in her kitchen and they start a relationship and he's escaped from like an institute in California. And it's just very, very good on like domesticity, um, kind of home family gender roles in the 1980s. This relationship is very surreal because it's like a sea monster, but it's also really tender and moving and like central. You kind of like are like into it. Um, like you f it feels believable about like people being different in the media. It was just good. Again, very short, a lot of these novels were, but really, really would highly recommend it. If you've read The Pisces by Melissa Broda, I think there's some similarities there for sure. And it was just really, really well written and an underrated classic. A Night All Blood is Black by David Diop. Recommend to a friend. Really, really enjoyed this book. This is translated from the French um, about a man, a Senegalese soldier who is fighting in the French, in the World War II on behalf of the French, in World War One, sorry, on behalf of the French in the trenches and his friend dies. And he, it's kind of his reaction to it, the way he like unravels and he starts killing people like the Germans in more like violent ways. And I love a good like descent of character story. This was really, really well written, especially for how short it was getting across so many big ideas around like war, around like savagery, around like savagery in war, but then also like people from the African diaspora being seen as savage, especially in that time about kind of like brotherhood and, you know, massive questions of like the idea of putting people out of their misery or killing them and who like gets to make that decision. It was just so, so good. Um, and it kind of goes into a bit of a surreally magic. It doesn't go like that at the end, but there's definitely conversations of that that are kind of put through it, which I loved. One the international book, I can see why this would, maybe I'll order like recommend to your friend at the end to show you like how close they are to being Chef's Kiss. Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, Chef's Kiss. Love this. This is like the shortest book I've ever been the most gripped by, if that makes sense. Cause it's really short, I think it's like a hundred pages, but it read like a thriller that I like couldn't put down. I felt like I'd been reading for ages and it all felt really fleshed out. This, it's hard to give anything away about the plot. Basically this woman wakes up, she's in a bed. I think she's lying somewhere and this man's talking to her and he's like, I need you to remember what happened. Like go back to this day and she doesn't understand why. And so he's like, you just need to remember, you need to remember. So then they start building up this thing. Basically she, the last thing she remembers is that her and her daughter had come away. This is uh, translated from the Spanish. I think it's set in Argentina and they'd come away to the country for like a holiday and they're staying on this plot of land where there's another mother and her son and it's so weird but so good like I feel like I could write an entire essay about this book now and it was my perfect blend of like weird unnerving way like how is this gonna wrap up and it does wrap up enough that you feel like you haven't just been thrown loads of random things to get you excited with no like end in sight but not too explained that you're like oh well that's unrealistic or that's like too magical but personally for me I don't find it satisfying and there's like clues that when you look back and yeah I just thought it was so 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 good <sighs> Snow by John Banville. 
This is either an I mean sure or an oh no. Uh, I think it's gonna have to go in. I don't know. I probably enjoyed it more than sweet bean paste, but like, I should have enjoyed it more. Let's put it in. Oh no. Um, this is like a crime novel historical set in Ireland where like a Catholic priest is killed and but in the house of this prominent Protestant family and then this Protestant detective has to investigate but it's just for Christmas and it's really snowy and isolated. That sounds perfect and it's like by you know a book winning author so it's going to be kind of literary but also like a murder mystery. I should have loved it. Wacky weird family, religious tensions in Ireland, lone wolf detective, should have loved it. Don't think it was a well plotted crime novel at all. Think it was obvious, think it was there wasn't enough else in there for you to not find it obvious. I think that it was kind of paced a bit weirdly. The like, there's like a kind of twist at the end, but like because the initial ending was so obvious, you've already got to that one, and then you just have to wait for. I felt like we were constantly waiting for the detective to catch up with us, which I find annoying. And also, he was just a weird character, like very weird about all the women in this old bat shit, basically, um, and don't act like normal human women. But I thought that was going to be like a reflection on him, and like then we see he's kind of messed up. But no, I think we're just meant to imagine that they're all like. Basically, they all want to shag him, and of course, why wouldn't they? And they're all like hysterical slash maniacal slash like they just really, really, really want to shag him. So yeah, didn't love that one. Um, the baby is mine by Ayonk and Braithwaite. I mean, sure, this would go in. Recommend to a friend because like there's nothing bad about it, but it is super, super short. Um, and so I don't have huge amounts to say about it. It's set during lockdown, which I liked. Um, in Nigeria, and this guy goes stay at his dead uncle's house because his girlfriend kicks him out and his auntie's there, and his uncle's mistress is there, and a baby is there, and they both say the baby's theirs. I think this could have been a longer book, and maybe I would have liked it even more. I think the only reason it's not higher is because there just wasn't too much to say about it, but it was twisty, it was fun. I liked it. I Yeah, it was good. Um, Case Study by Graham McRae Burnett. <sighs> Again, I think I'm gonna put it in recommend to a friend. I loved the first half of this book so much and then I didn't love the second half of it. Basically, it's about like this odd psychologist who has like very, I mean, it's also it's written as like a fake non-fiction book and it's about this psychologist who's been like widely discredited and he had really weird ways with his patients and then uh, so we get like bits about him written almost like as a biography and then we get this woman whose sister went to him and killed herself and so she starts going to him because she thinks he's killed her. I loved the first half because I loved hearing about him and his weird old ways and I loved the perspective of this woman. It was super mosh veggy and like very dark character study, like very like Eileen mixed with someone. I don't know, it was great. The second half, it was just too heavy on the biography of this man and it wasn't that that wasn't interesting but it was just written in quite a dry way that I didn't love um, and it kind of pulled me away from like being really into the character study so then I felt that lost some of its spark as well. I enjoyed it like it was a 3.5 it could have been amazing though like at the halfway point I really thought it was a five star prediction so that's a shame but the character study aspect of it was really good. Gifts by Laura Barnett. Oh no unfortunately just not this is an oh no because it just wasn't for me at all it's like a not even a rom-com there is no com in the rom it's about it's like interconnecting short stories about setting like a small town at Christmas about people buying each other presents. So we get one character who's trying to find a present for this guy she fancies, then it's the guy she fancies trying to find a present for the daughter, who's trying to find a present for her grandma, who's trying to buy a present for her carer's sister. So you go on like that and it was a shame because I felt like I really lost the momentum as we went on. You know, you felt like you got to know a set of characters and then it segued into like a different set. Um, and so I liked the like set at the end. I thought that was quite, it was moving the book um i thought the set at the end was a really interesting like little dynamic of like who was buying for who but i think i thought this was going to be super festive and funny and like heartwarming and it it wasn't really it was kind of depressing and it was kind of hard to keep myself motivated to read it when we kept switching perspectives so nice idea and i'm sure a lot of people will enjoy it not for me waiting for wednesday by nikki french recommend to a friend frida klein book three loved it i think it'd be my favorite of the three and then I read the fourth one, but that was in December. So like that one even more. But yeah, recommend to a friend. We love it. Um, Department of Speculation by Jenny Offal. I mean, sure. I really thought I'd enjoy this book more than I did. I liked weather. 
quite a lot. This felt like the same book, the same protagonist, the same kind of fragmented style, saying the same kind of nihilistic existential things about the world. I don't know. I found it a bit, I don't know, it just didn't blow me away. It felt too similar to, to weather. However, this book is basically just about like a woman living in New York with her family, like her husband and her child. Then her husband does leave her. And I did think the writing about like infidelity and being left and piecing back a relationship was good. Like that definitely pulled it up for me. That was good. I just couldn't shake the idea that it was basically weather again. I don't know. And I didn't find it funny. I found weather funnier. So it's a shame. I still liked it. Don't kill me CJ, but I thought I was gonna love it and I simply did not. I think maybe me and the fragmentary style aren't friends anymore. Um, the Girls by Lisa Jewell. You know what? I'ma put this in chef's kiss because it's probably one of my favorite thrillers I've read all year. So she gets a chef's kiss, even though like, she's not a five star, cause I never give thrillers five star. Um, this is about a like gated community, but not because loads of random people live there, but they all have like a shared garden in London. So there's like millionaires in these big houses. There's um, care workers who get like an NHS discount almost, smaller flats, and all the children hang out together in this garden. And it's set over the summer and we get the perspectives of two mothers, one of the really rich ones, one who's just had to move there with her children to escape like something bad that's happened. And then the perspective of one of the children. And at the start of the novel, so the, uh, the child perspective is called Pip, who's 11 years old. At the start of the novel, her sister Grace, who's like 13, is found like beaten in the gardens. And then we go back and build back up to the summer. I just thought it was really well paced, really well character done, like creepy, like weird people everywhere. And you weren't sure, like good dynamics with the children. I sometimes find children narrators annoying. I just find Lisa Jewell's books unputdownable, but I usually find the conclusions annoying. And I like the conclusion of this one. And I had a great time with it, so it gets a chef's kiss. Let Me Not Be Mad by A.K. Benjamin. Oh no, oh no. Um, Yeah, it wasn't for me. Uh, this is like a non-fiction book, kind of a memoir about this psycho, he's not a psychiatrist, he's a psychologist, but like a clinical psychologist, who, it's like case studies of the patients that he's had as he experiences a breakdown himself. I just really didn't gel with the writing of this like at all. And I guess, although that's something I should have loved because I love books about psychology and I love memoirs. I think if you don't get with the writing, even more so in a memoir, it's not gonna work for you. And I just found him, I don't know. I didn't like the way he constructed sentences. And I think it was a bit obtuse and in like a pretentious way at times. And then I think the book was intentionally confusing because it's trying to do like a bit of a twist but because it was so confusing, I guess the twist, and then it was very bleak towards the end and it just felt, I don't know. It, it was an interesting, ambitious project. I'm sure there's it, like there's a lot of worth in it. I didn't find the reading experience to be particularly pleasant or particularly interesting, unfortunately, because of this twist that kind of undermines some of the stuff you would have found interesting. I'll say no more. Um, Lemon by Kwon Yeo Sun. I'm gonna put it in, I mean, sure. I really didn't love this, but I didn't hate it. This is like a psychological thriller, but it's so short. Um, and it's about like a girl whose sister was murdered at high school. And again, like there's so much stuff in here that I'm like, oh, pull that bit out. That bit was really interesting. But instead we get other bits that I found less interesting. And it's framed in this weird kind of way, like as if it's gonna be like a big, like, oh my God, like who done it kind of thriller. And it isn't. And it's so immediately obvious who's done it. But again, like not to the other characters, so you're waiting for them to catch up. And it's very like, I quite like, it was written really like out of sync across different perspectives. And I liked those more like experimental bits of it that didn't try and be like a cold case mystery who'd done it and tried to be more like, how are these people 20 years on who were slightly in some way touched by this murder? Um, and I liked the like weirder uh, interpersonal bits. And yeah, like, I think the point was that, well, was the point that you knew who it was? It does kind of, it doesn't try and do a massive reveal at the end, like, ha ha. Um, but I, ju I just didn't really work for me, personally. Um, I like the ideas in it. It didn't quite come together in a way that I enjoyed very much. It's pretty bleak as well, like, life sucks, I know. Which is fair enough, but yeah, it's a shame because I really thought I was going to love that. Zadie Smith Intimations. I recommend to a friend. I love Zadie Smith. I love her writing. This is These essays were written around the time of lockdown. 
and she's just a genius and I love reading everything that she writes. It was very short, um, it was like 70 pages, so I'm not gonna chef kiss her for that. But I mean, I have nothing bad to say about it. And finally, Love and Colour by Bolu Babalola. <sighs> it's somewhere between, it's an I'm sure for me, but like very top end of I'm sure. But it's also a recommend to a friend because I can see other people who'd really like this and I enjoyed parts of it, but not all of it. This is a collection of short stories um, kind of based on various myths, retellings. And they're all romance stories and they're often fantasy romance stories and I don't like romance very much. So it's never gonna be an amazing success, but actually some of the stories I really did like, especially some of the more realistic, like fun ones that I think she wrote herself as like new stories, thought they were great. Um, and it was fun and easy and I did enjoy it. I like her writing. Okay, so let's just do a quick, that's all the books. Let's do a quick, um, how would I order Chef's Kiss? Do I even need to do that? I'd probably go like, um, maybe Fever Dream first, you know, and then like, maybe that. And then recommend to a friend, if you can't see, I've just put My Phantom, My Phantoms, The Night Will Blow Is Black, Little Scratch, Mrs. Caliban, Rizzio. I put, yeah, mm, Waiting For Wednesday, then Rizzio, Sea State. And then maybe The Grown Up, maybe McGlue, The Grown Up home uh blue breeze burn coat trust intimations can go like before mrs caliban yeah blue breeze burn coat mm, case study trust trust case study they're about the same okay i'm happy with that i'm happy with that and they are all books so i hope that was at all interesting uh, a new way of doing the wrap up please do let me know if you've read any of these books what you thought of them if you couldn't be bothered to watch my hour-long vlog and don't blame it now at least you know what i read in november obviously i would love if you subscribed i've got all my vlogmas videos coming this month my instagram my story graph will be linked down below and i'll see you in my next one bye